RMA, I'm Elle. I've just turned up in the Brecon Beacons for a little solo hike and wild swim. You may well know the very famous Four Waterfalls Walk. It's very close to there, but this is a slightly different Two Waterfalls Walk. And I've got a really cool secret that Second Waterfall is not very well known, so. In terms of logistics, I just parked in the car park of the Angel Pub. I'll put the postcode on the screen now. And there are public toilets when you arrive, so it's fairly well, uh, you know, facilities and stuff. There's plenty of facilities. When you arrive, you're going to walk up to uh, this gorgeous gate. It says Waterfall Country on it. And then you can head on through and start the trail. So this place is super popular on a summer's day. And quite commonly, any of the main waterfalls are going to be absolutely packed with people. But this second waterfall that I'm going to walk you to, I don't think it's as well known. Every time I've been there, I've been completely by myself. Um, not only is it more private and quieter, but the waterfall itself is much bigger and much more beautiful. So it's very much worth a visit. Immediately as you walk down the path, you're met with the river and it's rushing. It sounds gorgeous and looks stunning. You're in quite a tight little valley as well. So as you're walking along, you get these big sort of cliff faces. And if wild swimming is your thing, then it's not just the waterfalls you can dip in. The whole way down the river, there's these great big pools. There are so many places that you could get in for a swim. Another reason why this route is one of my absolute favourites is just the, the habitat, like the sheer amount of things that you can, you can look for in the woods, animals, plants, mushrooms, all that kind of thing. So I'm here in May, I guess it's mid spring, late spring, late spring. Um, and I'm going to be foraging some wild garlic right at the end of the season. It's my last, uh, last chance to grab some more. And then if you're really lucky, you can spot some amazing animals in this area. Like um, I know that kingfishers are here. I've only ever seen one in my life, so that's a really lucky uh, lucky spot if you can. And also, now that the water quality is improving again, otters are returning to all the rivers. Uh, I think, I think, I might be mistaken, but I think that the otter is the biggest predator in Britain, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is uh, I don't know what that says about Britain, but still really cool if you can spot one. So keep an eye out in the water as you go, because you might see some really cool animals. You're going to see quite a few paths coming off the side of the main track as well. Feel free to explore them, but we're just following the really obvious trail. You can't really get lost on this one. Now, this is the only real time that the um, the trail goes uphill and you've got some steps and stairs because it gets quite muddy and slippy. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing your shoes for this one. You don't need hiking boots, it's just a walk, but something that can cope with a bit of mud and wetness would be good. Sometimes as well, it's quite easy to get a, uh, a pace on and put your head down when you're walking. But in this valley, you really want to look up and look around because it is just perfect. Okay, so we've got to the first part of the route where you need to make like an actual, you know, direction decision and you'll see a bridge. It's the first bridge that you see like this. You, you really can't miss it. Um, ooh, if you stay on our current path and go left, then you get to the viewing platform for um, our first waterfall. But we're going to cross over and go on the right hand side because that's how you actually get to the waterfall itself. So from that side, we just follow the arrow and left we go and it's just going to be a couple of minutes until we get to that amazing fall. I can just start to hear the waterfall now. You come around and it starts to open up a little bit and you start to hear the people <laughs> inevitably. As you just walk into the water, look, you can barely see it because of the sun, but that there is the viewing platform. So that's how far away you'd be from the waterfall. Let's go and have a closer look. You can just walk right up under and underneath it. I think the sound is just going to be of this waterfall the whole time I'm here though. Isn't that huge? So good. There is plenty of room around this fall in the water so you can just get in and have a proper swim. But I knew that I was going to be swimming at the next fall so I decided just to get underneath this one and stand under it like it was a shower. It's quite a novel experience. Just bear in mind that I came here during like quite a dry period so the water was like not that strong and not that heavy. After heavy rains, it's gonna be like mega strong and probably knock you over, so just be yeah. careful. As always, you get out in such a better mood. <laughs> such a good mood. Feel amazing. Look at that. Amazing. Oh! Okay, I'm gonna leave the beautiful Sigurd Gwaladis behind. What we're actually going to do is head around the side of the waterfall up on top and keep following the river back so that we can find our second fall. Let's go. 
This is what the top of the waterfall looks like. And if you're brave, you can peek over the edge. We're just going to follow the stream for another 20 minutes or so. It took us about 40 minutes to get to the first one. So in total, only about an hour to get to the end. I did just tell two lads that I met at the first fall that it's back here and now they're just in front of me. So they're going to be there. But other than that, I'll make a bet with you now that nobody else is at that fall. Came off the rocks and found another little path, a trail to follow. This is gorgeous. I left my shoes off. I left my shoes off at the um, last waterfall because it's quite damp around there. And I'm so pleased I did. This is great terrain for walking death on nice, soft, foresty dirt. You're going to end up crossing the river a couple times on this one. So, like I said, I like being barefoot. Um, if you don't, that's fine. You can normally find a way across. Just uh, definitely be prepared to get all wet feet on this one. Because they're, yeah, ankle deep, above ankle deep. They will go over most boots and are quite wide. <laughs> Chances of you slipping in are pretty high. Yeah, think about going barefoot. I forgot about this. It's slightly uh, less accessible on this second half of the route. You can see how steep the bank is down there and how far it goes down and how narrow this path is. We can actually start to see the falls. There's a little one you can see just in front, a really small one, but there's a great big one behind it. We'll see it when we get around the corner now. But this patch is quite good for swimming into. I'll show you. So this is like spot one. You can see a bit better now. Great big pool for swimming in and a small little waterfall that I think even you can drop there and like almost slide off. Really cool. But yeah, just behind the trees, you can't even see it. Is the one we're looking for. So you go to the end here and you can't really see it. But then look, there's a uh, stepping stones. And from just over there, you have an amazing view. So let's cross. And look at that, not another soul to be seen. So the water at this fall was quite a lot colder than the last one. I'm not sure why, presumably because it's just further upstream and maybe most of the, the like river is in shade until this point. I knew the boys were about to be leaving, so I took a minute to like acclimatise my body so I don't end up in cold water shock at the moment that I get in. And then I couldn't resist the chance for one more private swim <laughs> after I said goodbye. That puts me in such a good mood and that's so good. I mean, look at it. It's just, I would say, I would say better than the, uh, the first wall, even though nobody knows about it. It looks like twice the size. You can't walk behind it and there's no way to get right up to it unless you swim, but still, what an amazing view. And like I said, I have the whole place to myself. Oh, I'm just gonna warm up and eat some lunch now and then head back exactly the way I came. That's how you get back to the, uh, the car park, just the same way. Take care on the slippy rocks and pee.